Hi, Vanessa here. In this video, I am going to be making my very first macrame project. I've always wanted to try macrame, but I didn't know where to start. I hit online when I was buying some yarn from Joanne's stores, and it was only $6.99. Plus, it was on sale, so I figured it would be a great beginner's project for me to start on. I did get a little carried away and purchase more than just this kit. <laughs> So far, I've only received this one, so I'm going to make uh, this one and see how it goes. All right, I'm excited to get started. It comes with the rope and the wooden dowel is included. And then there's this little booklet with the instructions. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, let's see, it says, always work from left to right unless otherwise instructed. And then number one, cut 20 cord lengths each, and each of them are 50 inches long. Okay, so let's do that first. Okay, so I'm going to measure 50 inches long, and then I'm going to use this to measure the rest of them. I was so focused on making sure I got the correct length that I let this whole thing bunch up and it's all tangled. Okay, so I have my 50 inch cords and there's 20 of them. And I have about this much left on my last one. I was a little worried I may not have cut it correctly. So the first thing it says to do is fold each length in half and attach to the dowel with a lark's head knot. So inside there are a visual, so that's good. For lengths 3, 4, 17, and 18, we need to face that upward. So that's this part here. I guess that's the hanging part of this project. It says these lengths will be the hanger. Okay, so a lark's head knot. Okay, so I'm basically tying it to the dowel. It says, for the hanger, turn the dowel so the lengths 3, 4, 17, and 18 are closest. I'm turning it over. And then it says, measure down about 4 inches and tie a square knot with lengths 3 and 4. Okay, so each of these that I attach is called a length. And they, I guess they're numbered from left to right. Okay, let's look at how to work a square knot. Okay, so four inches down. It says, tie the first half of a square knot, pulling the cords to tighten. Okay, so I'm going to follow the image here. And tighten it, so we'll pull it all the way up. Okay, so I guess I'm leaving it there where the four inch mark is. And now it says, it says swap the cords so the inner cords are now on the outside and vice versa. Tie another square knot about four inches above the previous knot. Okay, it's saying above, but I think it's, since it's upside down, it'll be below the last knot. So this is the knot that we're working. Repeat step three with lengths 17 and 18. Tie the hanger cords together in an overhand knot about two inches above the last knots. Okay, again, I think that's two inches below since I'm still upside down. So I'm assuming lengths 
means the, each of the chords. Step five, number the lengths one through 40, being sure to include the hanger chords. So how do I number them? I guess I'm just going to number them in my head. <laughs> not sure how you number them. What if you have like 200? Maybe I could use stitch markers or something. So using chords one through four, okay. So that's the four here. It says tie four square knots, making a column of knots. Repeat with chords 37 through 40. Okay, so that's the other end or the other side. So I completely messed up the square knot. I only did 12 and 13 and uh, I didn't even pay attention to this part here because I just read this line and I didn't come back to the instructions to read this. Okay, so now step six, using chords 11 through 30, tie five square knots across. So I'm going to tie five square knots across. Okay, step seven, 13 through 28, you tie four square knots. So then the next step is to tie three knots and then two knots and then one knot. But because I did this completely incorrect, I'm just going to fast forward this part because I'm actually going to redo this later. Step 11, it says starting on the left side, lay chord number nine diagonally to the right across the chords. Tie a diagonal clove hitch around number nine with number 10. And then you repeat with 11 through 20. Now it says starting on the right side, lay chord 32 diagonally to the left across the chords. Tie a diagonal clove hitch around 32 with 31 and then repeat 30 through 21. Okay, going backwards. Okay, so it's the same thing, but going in the other direction. So I'm supposed to tie a diagonal clove hitch around 20 with 21. That sort of closes this triangle. The last step is to repeat 11 and 12. So we're, we're working the same diagonal uh, knots just below it. Okay, so now I have to trim this. I'm going to trim it longer than what it shows on the image. So right here, theirs is really loose and I have this tight stitch here with long strands. So I thought redoing the sides here a little bit looser would make it look better. I even redid the center in the incorrect way, doing half a square knot but making it more loose. And it looked better but it still didn't look right. So the whole thing is wrong because most of it is square knots. Now I retied the sides here. You can see it's a lot better. It looks a lot more like the photo. I'm going to pull back the main part and I'm going to redo that part. Okay, so I'm going to loosen all of the initial knots because they look really loose in the photo. So I'm going to start on the left side here. So this is going back to step six where I'm supposed to tie five square knots from number 11 through 30. And I'm going to tie this square knots a little loose too. So I did the first half, now I have to do the second half of the square knot. Okay, so now it looks a lot better. Now I'm going to work the row of four, knot, four uh, square knots. Now I'm going to work the row of three square knots. Now the two square knots. And then this is my final square knot here. And now I'm going to do the diagonal rows, two of them. And this is the only knot that I actually 
did correctly so and I kind of remember how to do this so it's kind of nice not to have to look at the instructions again okay so this looks much better now I'm going to work another diagonal row so my ends are getting shorter than I would like because the first time around I didn't tie it properly so I don't have enough of the cords so it's going to be a little bit short I need to fix my hanging section too because I only did half a square knot here too okay so it's sort of uneven here I think I'm going to pull the strands apart so that it's easier to hide the uneven cords. And it's pretty too, it's a little fluffy. Okay, so I left this alone. I kind of like it uneven like that. I fixed <laughs> my knots and it looks so much better. I mean, kind of looks more like the photo, right? I did pull the strands apart so that you can't tell that some of them are really short. And I took two leftover strands and tied, sort of pulled it through here to kind of fill it in so that there's no gap there. Because I did have a few strands left. But I left, I left these alone. I really enjoyed making this once it made sense to me. <laughs> Um, I had an aha moment after just being really disappointed at how it turned out. And um, I think it's pretty easy. And anyone that wants to give it a try, I think this is a great first um, project. I look forward to the other kits arriving. I can't wait to make more. It's, it's really addicting. So that might not be good for my knitting and crochet <laughs> to squeeze in more projects into my busy schedule. I'll leave a link to the kit in the description box. It is an affiliate link. If you purchase anything through the links, I get a small commission and it helps me with my channel. So thank you in advance. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button so that you'll be notified every time I post a video. Alright, I'll see you next time.